So the exclusive economic zone, as I was saying earlier, if there are overlapping exclusive economic zones among states, then they have to enter into treaties for joint exploration. Kaya nga sabi natin kanina, walang basis yung claim ng China that there should be a joint exploration. Kasi atin, walang overlapping. Sila lang ang nang-overlap, tayo wala. Now, 1994 bar exam question number 11. No? Tagal na nito. Ayan. So in the desire to improve the fishing methods of the fishermen, the Bureau of Fisheries, uh, with the approval of the President, entered into a memorandum of agreement to allow Chinese OMG, parang propeta ang gumawa ng tanong na ito. No? Kasi 1994, 2020, ito ang nangyayari. Ha? Prophetic question. <laughs> <laughs> to fish within 200 nautical miles. That's our exclusive economic zone. Mm -hmm. From the Philippine Sea Coast on the condition that Filipino fishermen be allowed to use Chinese fishing equipment and vessel and to learn modern technology in fishing and canning. Is the agreement valid? Imagine that was 1994 bar exam. And in 2020, nangyayari ito. Ang problema lang, hindi tayo binibigyan ng equipment ng China, sinisira pa nila ang mga barko at bangka ng ating mga fishermen. Di ba? O is the agreement valid? The agreement is not valid. Why? The President cannot authorize the Bureau of Fisheries to enter into such kind of memorandum agreement with the Chinese. Why? That is our exclusive economic zone. As a violation of the United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. A violation of Article 2, Section 12 of the Constitution which says that the state shall protect the nation's maritime part in its archipelagic waters, territorial sea, and exclusive economic zone and reserve its use and enjoyment to Filipino citizens. Yan pa lang, sablay na, di ba? And under Section 7 of Article 13, the state shall protect the rights of subsistence Subsistence, dapat yan, subsistence. Fishermen, especially of local communities to the preferential use of the communal marine and fishing resources, both inland and offshore. Kasi ang problema natin, yung mga Pilipino na ang umiiwas sa mga Chinese, hindi na tayo makapangisda sa atin mismong exclusive economic zone. Ha? What do we need to do? Ha? Wala na tayo mahimo para tayo makapag-fish dyan sa atong mga dagat. Naunsa na? So siguro, mga yun lang tang, uh, tatlong hibla ng buhok ba? No? Para makabawi tayo sa mga Chinese na ito. Three strands of hair. <laughs> okay. So what about the continental shelf? Eh, ito, minsan itinatanong din yan. Ha? Ang continental shelf ay prolongation of the land territory underwater. Kasi di ba may tubig ka? Yun na sa ilalim ang continental shelf. Yan, tinan nyo yung illustration dito. No? So yung exclusive economic zone up to 200 nautical miles. But look at the uh, continental shelf. It shall not exceed 350 nautical miles. So exclusive pa rin yan sa atin. Ang problema, just like the exclusive economic zone, oh, take a look at this. Alin sa internet dyan. Huh? Um, just like the exclusive economic zone, we can harvest mineral non-living materials in the Uh, continental shelf to the exclusion of others under the Conclus Convention. And if there are overlapping continental shelf, we follow the same principle under the exclusive economic zone that we enter into a treaty for joint exploration. But since there is no overlapping continental shelves with China and the Philippines, joint exploration is untenable illegal, unconstitutional. Okay? Puntahan natin yung 2015 bar exam. A bill was introduced in the House of Representatives in order to implement faithfully the provisions of the CONCLUS to which the Philippines signatory. O, wala namang problema dyan. Okay? Now, Congressman Pat Riotic. Galing, no? Parang Chinese talaga ito. No? <laughs> Pat Riotic. Okay? <laughs> Question the constitutionality of the bill on the ground that the provisions of the UNCLOS are violative of the provisions of the Constitution defining the internal waters and territorial sea. Do you agree or not with the said objection? 
Okay? So, unang-una, ay basahin dapat kung ano yung nasa onclose. Oh. Describe the following maritime regimes under the onclose. Territorial sea, contiguous zone, exclusive economic zone, continental shelf. Oh, eh, palagi palang itinatanong na ito eh. Diba? Ayan. So, ano ba ang high seas? Ito, high sea yan. Drink yan. They are treated as res comunes or res nullius. They are either belonging to everyone or they belong to no one. Diba? Yan sa ikso mga studyante ko, if you become a lawyer, conquer but do not colonize. But make sure that what you are conquering is a territory that is res nullius. Belonging to no one. Pahirap mag-conquer ng uh, res comunes. Ano? They belong to everyone. Hala, ano yan? Sabi na sa akong studyante, hindi ko naman naintindihan. Sir, para yung silver swan. Silver swan. Tapos hawa ng bayan. Well, I do not know. Okay. So, there is freedom of navigation. Ha? It refers to the right to sail ship on the high seas. Pag lumagpas ka na doon sa, sa territorial waters, ha? tapos nandiyan na yung contiguous zone, exclusive economic zone, high sea na yan, international waters na yan. Di ba? So, kaya ang China, gusto niyang kunin ang kabuan ang tinatawag niyang South China si at Nine Dust Line para gawin niyang internal water. Eh, hindi papayag yan, lalo na mga Amerikano. Diba? At number one enemy ngayon ni Donald Trump, itong mga Chinese uh, Communist Party, hindi naman lahat ng Chinese. Kasi if you look at China, no? manunood kayo ng mga video na in, uh, any smuggle, kasi ang pinapakita sa atin ng China officially, yung magaganda nilang cities, <coughs> yung kanilang kayamanan, pero at the back of that, No, nandoon yung naghihirap ng mga Chinese na galit sa gobyerno. Ha? Ang masaya lang sa China yung mayayaman at saka yung middle class. Pero yung mga naghihikaw sa China, galit sa mga gobye sa gobyerno nila. Oh, naantay lang nila kay ilang pupulo at mo sa sambulat yan sa mga ng mga Chinese official. Anyway, 2004 bar exam. Ito yung question. Distinguish clearly but briefly between the flag state and the flag of convenience the flag of the uh, Czech Republic. No? Parang kapareho ng kulay natin. Now, ano ba ang flag state? Ito, hindi dapat sa bar itinatanong kundi doon sa marine engineering, maritime commerce. No? Okay, ang flag state is the state, uh, uh, the flag of the state carried by the vessel kung saan yung ownership. So like this one, Canadian flag, So, ang flag state niya ay Canadian flag kung sa Canada siya nakarehistro at ang may-ari ng vessel ay Canadian citizen. Okay? Sa atin, saan ka ba nagre-rehistro ng barko? Hindi sa LTO, land transportation yun eh. Sa air, air transportation, ATO. Eh, doon sa ano, sa Pandaga, tula namang STO. <laughs> ang tawag dyan, marina. So, we register uh, our vessel. Kung may barko ka, i-rehistro mo sa marina. Oh, eh ang problema ayaw mo i-register sa marina pero ikaw may ari, Pilipino ka, you register to another country dahil baka mahirap mag-register dito. Eh di ang dadaling flag ng iyong barko ay yung flag of the country of registration which is different from the nationality of the owner and that's what you call the flag of convenience. Okay? Yan yung mga sinasabi ko objectionable question doon sa 2004. Now, what about the baseline law? Kasi dapat may baseline tayo. At sa ilalim ng Onclose Convention, we have to draw our own baseline. So in 1961, June 17 to be exact, the Philippine Congress enacted a law, Republic Act 3046. Okay? Based on Article 3 of the Treaty of Paris. Opo, e binenta tayo ng mga Kastila sa mga Amerikano sa halagang isang da, uh, one, I mean, 20 million US dollars. Okay? Kinayaran ng mga Amerikano mga Kastila, 20 million US dollars, inyo na ang Pilipinas. Ang problema, hindi pa pala napasama yung Batanes at saka itong mga isla dito sa Babuyan Islands at saka yung Guam, Marianas at Saipan. So nagbayad uli ang mga Amerikano sa mga Espanyol ng 100,000 US dollars to acquire these territories. At nung tayo ay pinalaya ng mga Amerikano noong 1946, hindi na itinurn over sa atin ng Saipan, Guam at Marianas. So they are now U.S. territories. Diba? Ayan. So kasi nung panahon ng Kastila, sa so mga Kastila yan eh. Kasama ng Philippine Islands yan. 
Now, meron pa pala mga isla dito sa Cebu to Group of Islands, ha? Diyan sa bandang baba ng Pilipinas, sa may Tawi-Tawi, yung Turtle Islands, yung Mangsi Group of Islands. And they were under the British jurisdiction. So the United States and Great Britain entered into a treaty to acquire this island at hindi ni-reveal kung magkano yung bayaran. So nangyari dyan, that was the basis of our old baseline law. So take note of the result. You have a protruding line kasi para mapasama ang Scarborough Shoal. And then on the southern portion, near Palawan, para mapasama yung kabuan ng Kalayaan Group of Islands or Spratlys. Okay. So ngayon, there were supposedly typographical errors. No? There were typographical errors in that uh, law. That's why Congress made an amendment on September 18, 1968. O, oh, exacto nga araw. September 18, 1968. Diba? That was 52 years ago. Now, inamiyandahan yung uh, 3046. It is now Republic Act 5446, but to the same extent. Under the Third Unclos Convention, we were required to submit our final baseline not later than August of 2009. So our Congress, I mean Congress, no, ati mga senatong at mga Congressmen. Ay sorry, sa bisaya ba sa tagalog mga kinatawan? Apa sa bisaya mga kinawatan ba? Okay, ani bisaya. Inamiendahan yung Republic Act 3046 at Republic Act 5446. It is known as Republic Act 9522. So ano ang nakalagay sa 9522? Yung baselines ng Pilipinas ay in-exclude, hindi na sinaklaw o hindi na in-include ang Kalayaan Group of Islands under Presidential Decree 1596. Wami, kukwento ko sa inyo yan. Ha? Ha? together with Baho de Masinlok o yung Scarborough Shoal. Okay? So, hindi na isinama. Kaya, kung makikita ninyo ang kom uh, comparison, mamaya, anong ginawa nila doon sa mga islang ito? They were treated as regime of islands. Under Article 121 of the Unclos Convention, a regime of island is an island that is naturally formed area of land Surrounded by water, which is above water at high tide. O sige, hindi kasama dito yung mga nakalubong pagka low tide. Ah, kaya tama naman yung si Charlene Gonzalez ba yun? Ang tanong sa kanya, how many islands are there in the Philippines? Sabi niya, high tide or low tide? Tama naman. Diba? So, pero ngayon ang tanong, how many islands are there in the Philippines? Ang sagot daw, before or after Duterte? Okay, I do not know. Now, number two, except as provided for in paragraph three. The territorial sea, the contiguous zone, the exclusive economic zone, and the continental shelf of an island are determined in accordance with the provisions of the convention. So yun na yun, yung unclose. At para madiklara kang regime of island, these are rocks that cannot sustain human habitation. In other words, walang mabubuhay dyan. Kasi bato yan eh. No economic life. And they have no exclusive economic zone or continental shelf. Ngayon, ang tanong, yung bang Spratlys o yung Kalayaan, as we call it, at saka yung Scarborough, are they qualified to become regime of islands? The answer is, doubtful. No. Bakit? Kasi merong human habitation dyan sa Spratlys. May Kalayaan tayong municipality. And then sa Scarborough, meron dyang economic activity. Alam nyo, yung, yung Scarborough Shoal na yan, ha? Panatag Shoal or whatever, hindi makalapit dyan ng mga Chinese when the Americans were still in Subit. Why? Eh, threat yun sa mga Amerikano. So, kaya na-protectionan yan for the longest time. Pero nung makita ng mga Chinese na wala na mga Amerikano sa Subit, that's the time they encroach on our exclusive economic zone ha? at pinasok nila itong ating Scarborough Shoal. At ayaw na nilang umalis. Okay. So, compare and contrast Our baselines under the old baselines law as amended, Republic Act 5446, and the new baselines law under Republic Act 9522. Okay? 
So ito yung inilabas ng mapa ng NAMRIA, yung National Mapping Resources, uh, etc. Yan ang official body na nagbibigay sa atin ng ating official map. So yung kulay yellow that you can see on your maps in your screen, ha, that is our baseline. Okay? Atin yan. And then yung white, that is the extent of our territorial sea. O, nasa labas ang Scarborough Shoal at ang kabuuan ng Spratlys. Yung kulay green, that is our uh, contiguous zone. Contiguous zone. Labas pa rin ang Scarborough Shoal, labas ang Spratlys. So nasaan ang habol natin? Yung dotted lines that you can see, that is our exclusive economic zone. So pasok ang Scarborough Shoal, pasok ang major islands of the Spratlys group. Okay? Now, ang tanong, dahil siya ay naroroon lang sa exclusive economic zone, do we enjoy exclusivity? Okay. The answer is yes if there are no other countries with overlapping exclusive economic zone with the Philippines. Exclusive sa atin yan. So, next question is, does China have an overlapping exclusive economic zone with the Philippines to legally claim joint exploration with the Philippines over the exclusive economic zone? The answer is a resounding no. No and no. Why? Ang layo ng China. Hindi umabot dyan yung kanya exclusive economic zone. So, anong basis ng joint exploration? kundi yung ating pag-accommodate sa kanila. For whatever reason, I do not know. Magkano ang nangyari? Ay, magkano. Ano ang nangyari? Diba? Yung skip of the top. Pasensya na. Okay. So, that's why there were uh, freedom-loving people who filed a petition before the highest court of the land known as Magaliona versus Ermita. Ermita was the executive secretary at the time of Gloria Arroyo. On July 16, 2011, the Supreme Court rendered a judgment saying that the baselines cannot be drawn from the boundaries or other portions of the rectangular area delineated in the Treaty of Paris but from the outermost islands and drying reach of the archipelago. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Doon kasi sa Treaty of Paris, ang sinukat nating baseline ay rectangular. Ay, kita ninyo dyan sa illustration, ano? Oo. Oh. Rectangular siya para maisama lahat ng mga isla na kiniklaim natin. Yan ang ating baseline. Kasi, remember, baseline slow ang ginawa ng Kongreso. At kahit na baseline slow yan, hindi pa rin ito lumalabag dun sa exclusive economic zone natin. We still own the exclusive economic zone under the UNCLOS Convention. Okay? So kaya, ang gagawin natin, we follow this shape of the archipelago. And our archipelago is uh, triangular rather than rectangular. Okay? That's why ang sabi ng Korte Suprema dito, the principal sponsor of Republic Act 9522 in the Senate. Okay, lalag, ah, hindi ako nagsabi na ng Supreme Court. Ha? Miriam Defensor Santiago took pains to emphasize the foregoing during the Senate deliberation. Ano daw ang paliwanag ni Aling Miriam? What we call the Kalayaan Island Group or what the rest of the world calls Pratlis and the Scarborough Shoal are outside. So, tuwan-tuwa ang mga Chinese. Bakit? Outside na pala yan sa inyong archipelagic baseline. Because if we put them inside our baseline, we might be accused of violating the provision of international law which says that the drawing of the baseline shall not depart to any appreciable extent from the general configuration of the archipelago. So sa loob ng ating baseline, dapat magkalapit ang mga islands. Dahil malayo ang Scarborough Shoal, hindi natin masabing malapit sila sa atin, although we are still allowed by international law to claim them as our own. So ano ibig sabihin dito ni Ali Miriam? Hindi na siya part ng baseline natin, pero atin pa rin siya kasi pasok siya sa exclusive economic zone and wala namang overlapping ang exclusive economic zone ng Pilipinas at ng China, so China cannot claim the Scarborough Shoal and other islands of the Spratlys. Alam nyo, ang ginagawa ng China is bullying other countries claiming uh, territories in South China Sea. Nandun di pa rin sila nakamumpon sa barbarian law nila 
that in international law, might is right. That was in the Middle Ages. That if you are mighty, you have the right and you can impose that right upon the weaklings. Diba? That was a barbarian rule. I thought we are now in modern civilization. I thought China is part of the UN. And I thought China was part of the UNCLOS. At nangako siya. Diba? To abide by the treaty obligations. Eh, Chinese ito eh. Diba? Hindi ko nilalat ang mga Chinese dahil marami nang mabait. Pero itong China mismo, yan ang problema natin. Okay? So, what are the modes of acquiring territory? That is res nullius. Una, discovery or and occupation. Session, ba? Yung binibenta. Accretion, prescription. Conquest and subjugation, wala na yan. Kasi nasa modernong sibilisasyon na tayo. Ah, wala na tayo dun sa mga barbaric uh, era of the world history. Okay. So, discovery and occupation. Remember that territory is res nullius. It does not belong to anyone. So, pag na-discover mo, you occupy it, sa na yan. Then, possession and administration. So, pag nakakita ka ng res nullius na teritoryo, you possess it and administer it. And the symbolic act of raising the national flag in the territory uh, would tell the whole world that this is our territory. So, both possession and administration must concur in order for the discoverer. Uh, kaya nga, ang unang ginagawa nung mga nakaraang panahon, si Fernando Magallanes, although nun as Ferdinand Magellan, di ba, kaan nandiyan yan. At uh, pag ka nagpupunta ako dyan sa inyo sa Cebu, dumadaan talaga ako dyan kay, kay Magellan. Hindi kay Magellan, kay Lapu-Lapu. Dahil siyang kauna-unahang uh, Pilipino na ayaw pasakot sa mga foreigners, di ba? Ayan. Okay. So, anong ginawa ni Magellan nung dumating dito? Naglagay siya ng kanilang simbolo. At dahil akala niya ang mga Pilipino ay mga pagan so naglagay sila ng symbol of Christianity diba? planting of the cross o, diba? so meaning we possess these lands in the name of Christ dahil sila ay mga Christians at ang mga Pilipinos noon ay hindi okay? the absence of one will not give rise to acquisition of the territory so dapat nandyan yung possession and effective administration Ayan. so punta nun natin yung Kalayaan Island ano? dahil ito ang mainit na issue natin ngayon. So, Kalayaan Island is composed of one barangay. Ito po ay Barangay Pag-asa. Okay? So, ano ba ang naririyan sa Barangay Pag-asa na yan? Kali lang po, ha? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And then the island has a 1.3 kilometer airstrip ginagamit ng civilian at military. And it has regulated a civilian population of almost 350, most of whom were fishermen. So, again, I emphasize na ang Kalayaan group of islands, properly cannot be considered as regime of island kasi merong human habitation. At kung nakapanganak sa successfully yung sa asawa ng tatlong mangingisda dyan, abay 353 na sila ngayon. Di ba? Oh, uh, palagi ko naman, walang COVID dyan kasi hindi sila tumatanggap ng turista. Now, bakit mo napunta sa atin ng Kalayaan Island? In 1947, before you and I were born, ano? There was a Filipino, uh, ay, sa ibang record, siya ay lawyer, sa iba naman siya ay uh, uh, tawag dyan, admiral daw, no? Yan, Thomas Cloma. An adventurer, basta alam ko, mayaman siya at mayroon siyang sariling barko. So, he ventured into the South China Sea and he discovered several un uninhabited and occupied islands and islets. At ito, umalis muna siya at uh, bumalik siya, May 11, 1956. So, together with 40 men, si Admiral Thomas Cloma Kasama yung kanyang kapatid na si Pilimon. Hindi para mamingi sa karagatan, ha? Hindi para balikan yung mga isla. At tinawag nila itong Freedom Land. That's why we got the name Kalayaan. Okay. So, four days later, May 15, 1956, itong si Cloma issued and posted copies of Notice to the Whole World. So, lahat na nakita niyang isla, nilagyan niya ng tarpaulin. 
or billboard siguro, ano? Na notice to the whole world that we have an unwavering claim over this territory because this is part of freedom land. Okay? Taga, ano yan, tagabuhol yan si Thomas Cloma, ano, mga tagabuhol yan, kababayan yan. Now, on May 31, 1956, he declared the establishment of free territory of freedom land. And then 10 days after, nagpadala siya ng kanyang representation to the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, sino ba ang presidente noong 1947, si Manuel Rojas, ano? Informing the Foreign Affairs Secretary na meron siyang mga kiniklaim na territory na ang pangalan ay freedom land. Ayan. And then, July 6, 1956, he declared to the whole world na nakapag-establish siya ng free territory of freedom land. In other words, establishing a country at yung kanyang capital ay nandiyan sa malaking isla na kung tawagin ay Flat Island or Patag Island. Ito nakikita ninyo sa inyong screen. At yung rebultong yan, ay ay rebulto yata ito ni Thomas Cloma. No? And the same um, bus could be found at the gate or near the gate of a school in Quezon City and Manila, yung Philippine Maritime Institute. Kasi si Thomas Cloma rin ang founder ng eskwelahan na yan, PMI. Okay? Ilig talaga siya paglakbay sa dagat. So yan ngayon ng malaking isla, ginawa niyang kanyang capital. Now, his declaration, however, was met with violent and unfriendly reaction from several neighboring countries, particularly Taiwan. Kasi isa pala dun sa isla na nilagyan niya ng, ng notice ay kiniklaim ng Taiwan. Ang layo ng Taiwan yan, di ba? Pero kiniklaim niya yan ever since. So ito aba. Okay? Kaya ang ginawa nung Taiwanese Navy, pumunta dyan at ginarison yung isla. So wala-wala naman sundalo si Mang Tomas, eh di atras siya. Kinabayaan niya na yung ito aba. Kaya hanggang ngayon nasa Taiwan yung ito aba. And then, 1972, ay nagdeklara ng Marcelo si Marcos, si Thomas Cloma for calling himself an admiral for in fact, hindi naman daw siya part ng military, uh, ipinakulong. Okay? And nung siya naman ay makalaya, eh eh di nagpalit siya, pinalitan niya yung freedom land at tinawag, tinawag niyang kolonya. At uh, hindi na siya ang titular head kundi si John Mariveles. Ayan. Okay. In December 1974, Cloma was arrested again and forced to sign a document to convey to the Philippines whatever rights he might have in the territory. At remember, one peso lang. So ito yung living ni Tomas Cloma dyan sa Manila sa North Cemetery. Ano? Yung barko. Yan daw ang kanyang huling hantungan. So peso lang. At nakuha na ito ng Philippine government. Now, Marcos, knowing his international law, issued letter of instruction. Organizing the Western Command. Kasi alam niyo, futuristic yung mama eh. Ah, alam niya na baka magkaroon dito ng, ng trouble, so he might as well prepare for the future by organizing a Western Command in Palawan to take charge of all the islands na itinern over ni Tomas Cloma to the Philippine government. Okay. At to further the claim of the Philippines under international law, kailangan meron kang effective administration, Marcos, exercising his uh, uh, legislative power because during the martial law period, walang kongreso, si Marcos ang gumagawa ng batas by means of a presidential decree. Di ba? So he issued presidential decree 1596 and formally annexed the Kalayaan Island and created a municipality called Kalayaan in the province of Palawan but under the custody of the Department of National Defense. Anong purpose ng no National Defense? para mabantayan yung mga isla. So kaya may mga nakastation dyan ng mga sundalo galing sa Navy and some other forces para bantayan. Ito na ang problema. E di siyempre, nag sa revolution ka, nawala si Marcos, so kailangan yung mga sundalo, maya't maya may nagkukudita kay Cory Aquino, di ko nababanggitin kung sino yung mga leaders niya at isa niyan ay sekretary ngayon ng isang departamento, naging senador pa, tago natin sa pangalang Gringo Ho na saan. Diba? It's on the record na marami siyang kudita laabang kay Cory Aquino. So dahil kailangan ng mga sundalo, ni recall yung mga sundalo na nakabantay doon sa mga isla sa kalayaan. Okay? So, nawala ng tao, aba, eh di, nagpuntahan yung iba't ibang bansa at ang nauna, ang China, syempre, napakaraming nakuha niya. So kaya ang pagkakaalam ko, if I am correct, 
eh, mga around 35 to 40 islands and islets ang meron tayo dyan. Ngayon, maiwan sa atin, siyam na lamang. Okay? Napakalungkot, di ba? Now, what about the Scarborough Shoal? The Scarborough Shoal forms a triangle-shaped chain of reefs. Uh, bato ito, pero nangingisda dyan yung mga tao galing sa Sambales. Kaya may economic activity. So, 55 kilometers lang yung circumference. Kung tatakbo ka ng magdadrive ka, na 60 kilometers per hour, wala pang isang oras, naikot mo na yung buong island. Huh? Okay. And that was near Palawig. Palawig is a municipality in Sambales. So, around 220 kilometers uh, ng west ng Palawig, naroroon ang uh, Scarborough Shoal. So, from Scarborough Shoal, east mo yung Palawig Sambales. Okay. Now, look at China. Ang China, ang pinakamalapit niyang teritoryo, yung Hainan, that's 1,200 kilometers from Scarborough, Scarborough Shoal. Ito may flag na ito. No? Tayo, 220 lang. So, nasa exclusive economic zone natin. Yung 1,200 kilometers na yan ng China, lagpas-lagpas na yan doon sa kanyang exclusive economic zone. So, bakit nakarating siya dito? Eh, kasi daw, South China si kanila yan. Okay? At sabi daw nung ating mga senador, ay eh, malayo na sa Pilipinas, hindi na natin pwede ilagay sa ating baseline because we're violating international law. Kung marinig ng China, ah, malayo na sa inyo. O oh, sige, malapit sa amin yan. Amin na yan. Okay. Diba? Ang galing. Now, eh, bakit ba Scarborough Shoal ang tawag? So, the name Scarborough Shoal was taken after the East India Company ship na Scarborough, MD Scarborough. Anong September 12, 1784? Kailan lang yan? Lumubog dahil may bagyo. So, to honor those who perished, ito ay tinawag na Scarborough Shoal. At ang ginawa dyan ng China, sinakop noong 2012. At nanalo na tayo, ayo pa rin umalis ng China sa Scarborough Shoal. Bakit? Naniniwala ang mga Chinese na sila at ang Pilipinas ay mag-shoalmate. Okay? Kaya ayaw nilang umalis dyan. So, ito yung Scarborough Shoal sa kaliwa din ng iyong screen. At yung kanan, that is the plan of China to establish that Scarborough Shoal as a military base. That is too dangerous for us. Bagay, eh, at least malayo pa yan. No? Eh, yung nandito sa Cavite, no? na ibinenta na raw sa mga Chinese kung tama ang pagkakarinig ko. O, eh, wala, natayang ka. Lusot sa mga Chinese na ito. Now, anong legal basis ng Pilipinas? Siyempre, uh, among the criteria, effective occupation, di ba? Uh, Presidential Decree 1596 claimed that Scarborough Shoal and the Spratlys as part of the Philippine territory. So wala namang ibang bansa na nag-claim niyan at that time. Bago lang ang China nag-claim niyan. And historically speaking, ito yung kauna-unahang mapa na nakadisplay na raw ngayon sa National Museum Kalahati lang ito, no? kasi malaki yung mapa na yan. Yan yung tinatawag na Mabillardi map. Way back 1734, kailan lang naman ito. No? There was a Jesuit priest by the name of Pedro Morillo Velarde. Walang alam kung may mga kamag-anak pa siya ngayon sa Pilipinas. Ha? Yung kar gumawa siya ng karta hydrographica e chronographica de las Islas Pilipinas. So hydrographic and chronographic map kasi may mga drawings siya dyan tungkol sa iba't ibang kultura dito sa Pilipinas at iba't ibang mga tao plus yung mapa. So kasama dyan sa mapang yan, makikita ninyo bandang kaliwa, upper left, no? bago dumating dun sa Manila na nakalagay, may isang maliit na isla na tinawag ni Father Bilarde na Baho di Masinlok. Okay? Kasi noon wala pang Palawig. Masinlok was a town in Sambales malapit siya dun sa Scarborough Shoal kaya ang tawag baho di masinlok. Bakit baho? Hindi dahil hindi siya mabango. No? Kundi, mas mababa siya sa masinlok. Lower siya. Okay? Kasi mataas alto, di ba? Now, in 1774, that Velarde map was adapted by the Spanish government in the Philippines as the official map of the Philippine Islands. Okay? Mapa ng Pilipinas. <clears throat> At nakalagay dyan yung Scarborough Shoal pero ang tawag na Panakot Shoal. Bakit Panakot? Siguro para matakot ang mga Chinese na hindi pumunta dyan pero hindi naman sila natakot. Eh. Okay? 
kasi ayaw ang natakot. So, since 1734, there was a historical claim and historical basis in our map that we own the Scarborough Shoal. Bakit kina ang kina mga Chinese? Nais na naman, ang Pilipinas pala ay province of China. No? Okay. So ngayon, ang Chinese claim naman, remember, nagsimula lamang ito noong 1947. Ha? Noong mag-issue sila ng official map. But remember, that China that issued that official map claiming the South China Sea was Taiwan, not the People's Republic of China. Bakit? Kasi ang People's Republic of China, 1962 lang yan, 1963, inadmit sa UN. Remember the history of China, di ba? Oh, after World War II, ang prior and after World War II, ang namumuno sa China ay si Chiang Kai-shek, the nationalist. Okay? Ang problema, yung mga komunista led by Mao Zedong, uh, nilusob itong Beijing at natalo itong kwersa ni Chiang Kai-shek So, umatras sila sa Formosa, which is now known as Taiwan. And Taiwan continued <coughs> the name Republic of China. It was a member of the UN. But nung si President Lyndon Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, went to China at namasyal sa Great Wall of China, pagbalik niya sa Amerika, there was a resolution at the UN <coughs> making People's Republic of China as the official member of the UN and expelling Republic of China, which is Taiwan, as the Chinese representative in the UN. Oh, yun ang istorya niyan. Kaya ang Taiwan is no longer recognized as a state, despite the fact that it has all the elements of the state under that Montevideo Convention of 1933. So yun ang istorya. So ang nagkiklaim niyan, if ever, ay Taiwan, not the People's Republic of China. No? But since we add here to the one China policy, huh? there is only one China in that People's Republic of China. Okay. So, noong 2012, nagkaroon ng stand-up sa Panatag Shoal. China and the Philippines announced that they are separately imposing fishing bans on the Scarborough Shoal. Okay? Sino nanalo? Alam natin, umatras ang mga Pilipino. Okay? Huh? Bakit tayo umatras? Eh, kasi nga natakot doon sa laki ng mga Chinese vessels. Alam nyo kahit gaano kalaki ng mga barko ng China, hindi dapat katakutan yan. Lulubog yan eh. Bakit? They are made in China. Okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yan. so yan na ngayon ang nine dash line. And accordingly, that is daw the new Great Wall of China extending from North Korea down to the Philippines and going up to Vietnam dahil ang Vietnam ay ferocious in its defense of its territories, di ba? Ayan. Now, alam nyo, ito, pagpupunta kayo dun sa <coughs> Ho Chi Minh City, ating Saigon sa Vietnam, ha? Ayan, kung mismo nag-picture niya noong 2018. Ang nakalagay dyan, no? Uh, meron dyang Vietnamese, meron Chinese, at merong Uh, English translation, uh, yung Paracel, yan, kasi paikot eh, Paracel and Spratly Island belong to Vietnam. That is in their plaza. So anyone, tourist or whatever, na dadaan, makikita yung kanilang uh, claim over Paracel and Spratly. Ano ba yung Paracel? Palikan natin ito, yung Paracel Island, yan, yung malapit yan dyan sa Hainan Province. It was formerly occupied by Vietnam, North Vietnam. So after the war, na wala ang North Vietnam, ay di isang Vietnam na lang, di ba? South Vietnam pala, dahil ito yung democratic, yung North ay yung communist. So na wala ang South Vietnam, natira yung Vietnam. So still, they possess Paracel. Back in 1997, ganyan din ang ginawa ng China. Pinubunggo-bunggo yung mga vessel ng Vietnam. And finally, nilusob ang Paracel. Okay? So, walang, pumala, walang nakapalag. May mga namatay ng Vietnamese Navy. Bakit? Iyon ang kinakatakutan siguro ng ating Pangulo. Na baka tayo ay girahin din ng China. Pero, imagine, remember the difference. Vietnam has no military 
uh, treaty or defense treaty with any country like the US. In fact, uh, kaaway nga dati ng America ang Vietnam, di ba? Dahil komunista yan, so ayaw ng mga Amerikano. But in the Philippines, we have that mutual defense treaty. Ang unang panahon na ngayon ay visiting foreign aggressors. I'm sorry, violent forces of America. I'm sorry, uh, ano pala yan? Tawag yan. Visiting foreign uh, forces agreement. BFA. Na pag binasa ninyo, that's still a mutual defense treaty. Na pagka may trouble tayo, militarily, we can call on the U.S. and the U.S. is obliged under the treaty to help us. Walang ganun ang Vietnam, kaya malakas ang loob ng China. O tayo, nanalo na tayo sa kaso, ayaw pa natin i-enforce, di ba? We wait until after 2022. Ha? Depende kung sino pa magiging Pangulo. Okay? So yun. Yan ang problema natin. Okay? Ang problema lang naman natin dyan sa ano, pagkabata daw sa Maria. Pero pagka matanda na at gusto malaking pera, pemberton. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, puntahan natin. So, dahil sa pambubuli na ito ng China sa atin, the Philippines filed a case with the ITLOS. Okay? The International Tribunal on the Laws of the Sea. Kaya lang, ayaw natin ng adversarial proceeding. So we opted for arbitration, which is provided for under Annex 7 of the UNCLOS. So may nakalagay na Annex 7 doon na pag ayaw mo ng court litigation, you can go for arbitration. O, sana ganito na lang, eh, no? si Leon Guerrero at si Jackie Chan. <laughs> so ang ginawa natin, ipinail natin ito sa itlos. We notified China, but China rejected our pa submission. Okay? Ayaw nila. Kasi notify nila. Inignore nila tayo. Kaya, ang ginawa natin, nag-file tayo ng 4,000 page memorial. Ito, ito yung ating position paper. Ha? Yung PTL position paper ang tawag or memorial sa itlos. Okay? At nung nakaraan, may isang kandidato na nagsabi na mag jet ski siya at ilalagay niya ang Philippine flag. Narinig ng buong sambayanan yan. Nagrinig ng buong mundo yan. That's why, nung bagong uh, upong pangulo si Presidente, may mga reporters, I think from Al Jazeera, in-interview siya. Nagpa-interview naman siya. At ang tanong sa kanya, at pwede niyong ihanapin sa YouTube yan, ah, mag-subscribe na rin kayo doon sa channel natin, eh, ang tinatanong siya, Mr. President, you promised during the election campaign that you'll be riding in a jet, jet ski and you will plant a flag on the disputed island. Have you ever done that promise? Sabi ng Pangulo, that's hyperbole. You want me to go there on a jet ski? I don't even have a jet ski. How can I do that? <laughs> kayo naman. Nangako na eh. Gusto niyo tumupad pa. Ang bira naman kayo. Siya naman demanding. Diba? Okay. So, nag-file tayo. Ang problema, nireject talaga ng China dahil yung position daw ng China dito, kanila yan. Ha? Kanila yan. At tayo ang mga nag-encroach on their territory. So kaya ang ginawa ng ITLOS, itong si Sun Jianay ang presidente at the time, Japanese, at isa yan sa mga punto ng China na bias daw ang ITLOS kasi ang Japan ay meron ding territorial dispute with China and the president at the time of ITLOS was a Japanese, si Sun Jianay. So ang ginawa ng presidente, itong si Sun Jianay, appointed five arbitrators because according to our position, we are opting for arbitration. So kaya nag-appoint siya ng arbitrators. Anyway, yung arbitration is guaranteed that we can avail of it under Annex 7 to the UNCLOS Convention. So kaya nag-appoint siya ng arbitrator. Okay? At ito yung mga arbitrators na inappoint niya coming from the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Okay? Si Judge Thomas Mensa, ang presidente. Dati rin presidente yan ng ITLOS from Ghana. So natakot ako dyan kasi uh, baka maging bias laban sa Pilipinas. Why? Kasi kababayan niya yung si Cloti, ibinugbog yun ni Pacman eh. <laughs> 
So, pero <laughs> hindi naman. And then Jan, uh, Judge Jean Pierre Pat from uh, France, Alfred Zunz from the Netherlands, Olaf from Poland, and Wolfram from Germany. So sila yung mga tumayong arbitrators, no? At sila ay appointed by the ITLOS, by the ITLOS, ano? The International Tribunal on the Laws of the Sea. So ang sabi ng China, walang jurisdiction ang arbitration panel because it should be the ITLOS. Yan naman ang problema natin diyan. Pipirma pirma ka at hindi mo ngayon na hindi ka sang ayon sasabihin mo walang jurisdiction eh kung pumirma ang China sa onclos part ng onclos yung arbitration o di ba napaka convenient para sa China na sabing walang jurisdiction bakit eh kami na nakaposisyon eh oh so sabi ng Beijing the special tribunal at the Hague ito na yung permanent court of arbitration has no jurisdiction over the issue since onclos does not accord it the mandate to address what are essentially sovereignty-related issue. We. <laughs> eh, di ba dun sa onclos nakalagay arbitration? Tama sila na hindi naman binanggit kung sino ang tatayong arbitrator. Okay? But it was the decision of the ITLOS to appoint the arbitrators from the Permanent Court of Arbitration. The Permanent Court of Arbitration was established as early as 1898. And there were several cases that they were successful in arbitrating. No? Ayan. Now, so para pagbigyan lang ang China, dahil sabi nyo, wala kaming jurisdiction. So nag-hearing ang Permanent Court of Arbitration and it decided on October 2015, October 29, 2015, that China's strongest argument against the Philippines in jurisdiction has no basis that the Permanent Court of Arbitration has jurisdiction to hear the case under the Onclus Convention in which China was a signatory. Okay? So, napaka-convenient, di ba? Pipirma ka, pero pag-apektado ka, ayaw mo na. Hmm. Now, on July 12, 2016, so sino ang presidente yung nag-file? Si Pinoy. 2016, lumabas ang desisyon. Sino ang presidente? Ay, di si Presidente Duterte na. Lumabas ang desisyon consisting of napakanipis 501 pages. Okay? At that time I was still teaching international law sa College of Law, ay pinapabasa ko sa mga estudyante ko. Okay, alam mo shadow makapal ano. Okay. So ito na yung summary, ano ba ang nilalaman ng desisyon? The Chinese government is claiming that they have jurisdiction over the entire South China Sea because of what they called nine dash line. Historically speaking daw, lahat ng resources na yan ay pag-aari ng China. Masabi ng arbitration panel, yes, siguro nga may historical right kayo, but your rights ah, were extinguished na wala na yan kasi incompatible yan doon sa exclusive economic zone. Remember itong mga teritoryo na ito, nandiyan sa kanan ng inyong screen, na kiniklaim ng China ay way, way beyond sa 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone. Kulang na lang sa kopi ng Palawan kung nakita nyo. Diba? Ganun sila kasakib. Okay? Probably that's the right term. There was no evidence that China had historically exercised exclusive control over the water or their resources kasi common fishing ground ito. Ng Malaysia, ng Vietnam, ng Taiwan, ng Pilipinas lalo na kasi malapit na malapit sa atin, ng Brunei, ng Indonesia. E pumasok na kayo dun sa convention, so limitado na kayo sa 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone. And China has no legal basis to claim historic rights to resources within the areas falling within the Nine Dust Line. In other words, China lang ang may gusto ng Nine Dust Line. Hindi yan recognized internationally. Diba? Okay. Now, issue number two. So panalo tayo sa first issue, yung legality of historic rights over the Nine Dust Line. Number two, status of features. So the ribs have been heavily modified by land reclamation. Okay? Ang China, nagtambak dyan. At meron na kapag kwento sa akin, ewan ko, maniniwala kayo, napin nyo lang sa Google. Pinayagan ng ating gobyerno and even affirmed by the Supreme Court, the right of foreign 
mining corporation, 100% foreign owned corporations to mine, to operate uh, the mining facilities to mine resources in the Philippines. Eh di ba't bawal daw yan? Eh di ho, noong 1995 meron uh, tayong Philippine Mining Act allowing 100% foreign owned corporations to operate uh, in our mining industry. Eh karamihan dyan mga Chinese na nag-ooperate. Okay, limited lang naman daw kasi sa financial and technical assistance. <coughs> okay, so anong problema niyan? Pag nagmimina ka, ang kinukuha mo lang yung mineral, iniwanan mo yung lupa. But I was told, na pagka Chinese mining company, kinukuha pati yung lupa. So talagang level yung bundok. Saan lalagay yung lupa? Yan, pinantatambak dyan sa South China Sea. Okay? Diba? So tinatabunan tayo ng ating sariling lupa. So certain areas within the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines, because those are not overlapped by any possible entitlement of China. So yun ang sinasabi ko. Bawal ang joint exploration because there is no overlapping of our exclusive economic zone with that of China. Ang layo. Di ba? So kung nag-iisip lang talaga itong mga ito, ay, kami dapat ang may-ari niyan. Oh. Now, letter C. Ito yung third issue. Kasi there were five issues. Four were ruled in favor of the Philippines. Only one was not ruled upon. So at least, apat pa rin, panalo tayo. So lawful ba ang aksyon ng mga Chinese? Certain areas are within the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. So paulit-ulit na sinasabi na yung mga areas na sinakop ng China ay nasa loob ng exclusive economic zone. So the tribunal found that China had violated the Philippine sovereign rights in the exclusive economic zone. Ano ang mga paglabag ng China? Number one, interfering with Philippine fishing and petroleum exploration. Hindi na nang makapangisda yung mga mangang mga mangisda natin kasi binubuli nila, binobomba nila ha, ng water cannon. Okay? Para silang nasa Mindyola. And then, constructing artificial islands in violation of the UNCLOS and failing to prevent Chinese fishermen from fishing in the zone. So dapat pagbawalan mo ang mga fishermen mo. Hindi nga, ginagawa ka ng China. Ini-encourage yung mga fishermen eh, na mangisda dyan. At ang ginagawa daw, ha, kung paniniwalaan natin yung mga fishermen, Ang pangingisda nila ay dangerous to the environment. Bakit? Bukod sa dynamite fishing, nagmumuro ami. Ano yung muro ami? Pinapatay nila yung mga coral sa ilalim. Para lumabas yung mga isda, so wala na. Mauubos na ang resources dyan. Di ba? O pagka Pilipino ang gumawa niyang kulong. Pero pag Chinese, okay lang. O hindi natin kaya. Di ba? Ayaw natin awayin eh. Letter D. Harm to marine environment. O, look at this picture. That was an actual picture, not mine, but in Google, huh, of Chinese fishermen caught by the Coast Guard of the Philippines. At tingnan nyo ang kanilang mga hinuli, yung mga gentle giant na pawikan o yung sea turtle. Ang lalaki niyan, pero hindi naman nangangagat. Kinuha nila. Giant clubs, yung mga taklobo kung tawagin sa Tagalog. Okay? Mga endangered species. Pag Pilipino ang kumuha niyang pulong hanggang dalawang taon. Pero pag Chinese, Okay lang, ibigay namin kayo eh. O, di ba? O, now, ito na ang sabi nung isang website. Na dahil sa paninira ng ating environment, ang China ay may utang na sa atin na total 190 billion US dollars. Okay? Dapat singilin na natin yan. At lahat ng nawala sa ating kabuhayan because of the virus originating from China, dapat singilin din natin sila. O, di ba? Ayan. Okay, so Chinese authorities were aware that Chinese fishermen have harvested endangered sea turtles. Sabi ko sa inyo kanina, corals, giant clams, these are not my wordings. These are the wordings of the decision of the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Okay? Using methods that inflict severe damage on the coral reef environment and have not fulfilled their obligations to stop such activities under international law. So, nasaan na ang adherence to international law ng China? Diba? We don't hate the Chinese. We hate the policies of the Chinese government. Okay. Now, letter E. Ito yung fifth issue na ayaw desisyonan ng arbitration panel. Why? 
wala daw siyang jurisdiction to consider the implication of the standoff. Kasi itong nakikita ninyong Ayungin Shoal ang tawag natin dyan. O sa International of Second Thomas Shoal, arin yan, may barko. Ito nakikita itong barkong ito nasa baba, nakasadsad dyan malapit sa Ayungin Shoal. So ipinapaalis yan ng China. Pero ang Pilipinas ayaw umalis kasi atin daw yan eh. So sabi nung arbitration panel, eh military issue yan. So wala kaming pakialam dyan. Okay. So at least nanalo tayo sa apat. Ito yung barko na naggogwardya doon sa Ayungin Shoal. At si Tanyo, diyan nakatira yung ating Philippine Navy. Ang ganda ng barko, di ba? Oh, ayan, advantage yan. Kasi itong mga missiles na ito ng China, yung mga torpedo nila, ay computer-guided yan, nakaprogram. So pag tiniran nila ito ng mga missiles nila, mag-iisip yung kanilang missiles, ano ba ito? Barko ba ito o ano? So iiwasan na lang yan, baka matitano sila eh. <laughs> diba? Pambihira. That's BRP Sierra Madre, Google nyo. Ha? BRP Sierra Madre. At ito patuloy ang pangaharas ng China at ng Chinese Coast Guard sa ating mga mangingisda dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Diba? Ayan. As of 2019 yan, March 29, no? Naharas yung mga mangingisda natin. At yan, binangga yung barko, iniwanan. Ha? Dahil ang sabi nila, nagkaroon daw ng kolisyon pero sabi naman, stationary daw sila. So if there are two vessels that collided and one is stationary and one is moving, that's not collision. Ang tawag dyan, alision. Ah, alision pala, di ba? Sa maritime commerce. So kaya pala, iniwanan. Ah, iniwanan sila ng mga Chinese. Bakit? Alision. Ayun, malision. <laughs> okay. Now, so, at yan na ang... Matapos imit yung mga fishermen na ito, nagbago ang kanilang isip. Hindi naman daw Chinese na ang bumangga. Okay. At isa sa mga judges, itong si Stanislaw Paulak from Poland, ay nagpunta dito sa atin November 26, 2018. Nagtandak ng seminar para ipaliwanag yung kanilang uh, ruling at nangihinayang siya. Kasi nga, nanalo kayo, but ayaw niyong i-enforce yung panalo niyo. Eh, sabi nung iba, eh, kasi takot po kami, baka garahin kami ng China. China cannot do that. Hindi tayo pwedeng lusubin. O kung lulusubin tayo, takot ba tayo? O, oh, kasi may Chinese. Eh, remember yung mga bala nila made in China. <laughs> okay. So, ano naman ang sinasabi ni Justice Antonio Carpio na isa sa mga pinakamasigasig na otoridad kasi kasama siya doon sa ating delegation at panel na nag-file ng kaso niyan. Okay? Sabi niya, China's territorial claims in the South China Sea in defiance of a 2016 international arbitration ruling is the gravest external threat since World War II to the Philippines. Tama. Ayan ang sabi nung acting head of the Supreme Court kasi at that time siya yung OIC ng Supreme Court. Ano? Ayan. Kasi wala pa si Justice uh, Sereno. At ang pinaka malupit dyan na Chief Justice ay si Ju Justice Puno. At yan po na yung Chief Justice. Bakit? Punong mahistrado. At sino yung pinaka-dangerous? Ang dangerous dyan ay si Chief Justice Panganiban. Okay? <laughs> Panganiban. Eh bakit si Chief Justice Sereno ang inappoint ni Pinoy? Eh hindi naman siya ang mo senior. Eh kasi daw ayaw ni Pinoy ng wang-wang. Kaya -wang. Sereno yung kanyang Chief Justice. Ayan, nakuwaran to tuloy. Sabi naman ni Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales, ha? kahit siya ay babae, huwag niyang tawagin Ombudswoman. Ha? Please, huwag niyang gayahin yung mga tumatawag na Ombudswoman. <laughs> Ombudsman yan, kasi ang Ombudsman ay isang borrowed word from Sweden, from Scandinavia, na ang ibig sabihin ay public defender. Ay, hindi naman natin pwedeng tawagin public uh, defender dahil baka, baka maging public attorney's office, di ba? O kaya ang tawag natin Ombudsman. Okay, alam niyo naman ang function ng Ombudsman under Article 11 and under Republic Act 6770. I need not tell you that. Okay? Sabi ni Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales, A nation can survive its fools and even the ambitious. But it cannot survive treason from within. Oh, may pag-atake itong si Chief Justice Morales. Ha? Ay, si Chief Justice. Si Ombudsman Morales, dating Justice of the Supreme Court siya. Ah, sabi niya, quoting from Cicero. So, an enemy at the gate is less formidable, for he is known and carries his banner openly. But a traitor moves amongst those within the gate freely. His lie whispers, rustling through all the alleys, heard in the very halls of government itself. <laughs> Pinapatamaan si Aling Conchita. Ano? Okay. 
at uh, dinimanda kung alam niyo dinimanda ng uh, nitong si Justice uh, Morales at saka ni uh, Secretary Del Rosario ang China sa International Criminal Court no for war crimes at uh, crimes against you and war crimes crimes against humanity bakit eh dinideprive nila ang mga mangingisdang Pilipino ng kabuhayan so sa ICC pwede ba yan well let's see kasi hindi na miyembro ng Pilipinas, uh, hindi na miyembro ng International Criminal Court ang Pilipinas. So let us see kung anong mangyayari dyan. Eh may kaso pa sa Supreme Court eh. Mamaya, didiscuss ko sa inyo. Ano? O kung hindi ngayon, bukas. Or even Sunday. Hanggang Sunday pa naman yata tayo dito. No? Ayan. Okay. Now, sabi naman ni James Holmes, foreignpolicy.com. Yan ang kanyang website. Pwede niyong puntahan. Ha? Paano ba natin ipapatupad yung panalo natin? Kasi maraming bansa ang humanga sa atin. Di ba? That we stood against a bully. We stood against an invader by filing a case in court. Ang Vietnam, hindi siya nag-file ng kaso. Inagawa na siya ng Paracel Islands, hindi siya nag-file. Pero tayo nag-file tayo. Kasi ayaw natin ang madugong sagupaan. Di ba? O, pero paano natin i-enforce? Panalo na tayo eh. Let us not sit on our victory baka ma-stop tayo by latches yan. But while the Ompus Tribunal ruled China's over it unlawful, the court has no enforcement arm. Yan ang problema. Walang sheriff ang itlos, lalo na yung tribunal, yung arbitration. Now, China refused to take part in the legal proceedings, Re rejected the ruling, and for good measure, flew a nuclear-capable bomber over Scarborough Shoal afterward, which the Chinese Coast Guard a vessel rested from the Philippines Navy six years ago. So, inagaw sa atin yan. Okay? Now, Manila must show people what China is doing. So, pakita natin. Eh, kaso, ang problema, paano natin papakita? Kaibigan natin ang China. At meron pang ang mga sinasabi ng Philippine province of China. Di ba? So, in the case of fellow Asian powers, remind them that if they do not do anything, you will be the next target of China grabbing of your territory. Sabi ng Indonesia, mukha nyo, eh kami hindi makalapit sa amin ng China eh. Bakit? Eh sinusunog namin ang barko nila eh. Sige, i-google nyo yan, i-youtube nyo, may mga barko ang China na sinunog ng Indonesian Navy. Okay? So Manila must likewise aim its opinion shaping efforts at the current perspective uh, prospective partners. Di ba? That's no military option of its own. Remember, iisa o oh, may dumating na ba yung isa? O oh, isa lang eh. Sri Lanka. O, oh, yun. Pakalaki niya. Ang itinatapat natin, BRP Gregorio del Pilar. Oh. The Philippine Navy is centered on the three elderly U.S. Coast Guard ah, na pininturahan at renamed frigates. Ito yung mga niretiro na ng U.S. Coast Guard and under the BFA, binigay sa atin, abininta sa atin at ginawa natin kunyaring uh, brand new. Di ba? Oh, so, China's Navy would make short of them in battle. So, matatalo tayo. O, tingnan nyo. Ayan ang Chinese, yung Silang Plan 83. Ayos sa atin, Gregorio B.R. Gregorio del Pilar. Takpo, parang, ano yan, di ba? David and Goliath. O, but don't worry. Itong sa atin, made in the USA. Yung Silang, made in China. O, di lulubog yan. Di ba? At saka itong B.R. Gregorio del Pilar natin, that's 50 years old. Ito, mga 5-10 years old lang yan, itong Silang. O, oh, edi, wala nang tatalo sa BRP Gregorio del Pilar in terms of experience. 50 years old na yan. That's okay. Marami nang karanasan yan. O, oh, alimanag. Okay. And then, ang UN Security Council daw po pwedeng umaksyon. Ang problema lang natin, China is a permanent member of the Security Council. So, doon tayo nalamangan. Now, ASEAN could act. But the problem is, hindi naman united ang ASEAN. Kasi yung Cambodia, naku, pro-China. Although Vietnam, kalaban na kalaban na ngayon ang China, di ba? Oh, it's not, ASEAN is not a military um, treaty, it's not a military organization. Oh, ano yan? Economic alliance lang yan. Eh. Okay? Then, a mutual defense treaty. Oh, ito na, papasok na kahit si James Hope. Sabi niya, may mutual defense treaty kayo sa Amerika, ba't di nyo gamitin? Di ba? Washington has inch closer and closer to declaring that the treaty applies to offshore island and atolls. Ang problema natin nasa atin. Kasi yung ating administration, sorry ah, ako, ibinoto ko pa rin naman itong si Presidente Duterte noong nakarang eleksyon, 
Pero, we have to realize the fact na panalo tayo at ang treaty natin ay sa Amerika at hindi China. So, bakit tayo dikit na dikit sa China? Anong dahilan? Sabi nga ni Pink, just give me a reason. Okay? There must be a reason. O kung ayaw kay Pink, si Lady Gaga, ano yun? A million reasons. But just one good one to say. Ano yung good reason na yun? <laughs> okay. So, sabi naman ni Justice Antonio Carpio, paano ba natin i-impose ang ating victory? Paano natin ito? Eh, wala tayo rin ito execution eh. Sana no, tanggap natin ang desisyon, binigyan natin ng notice yung embassy ng China dito, oy, ito na, yung desisyon, panalo kami, lumayas na kayo sa Scarborough Shoal. Hindi natin ginawa hanggang ngayon eh. 2016 yan, 4 years ago na, oh, di ba? So, Philippines and Vietnam daw can enter into a sea boundary agreement at ginagawa naman na natin yan ng Vietnam, di ba? A similar sea boundary agreement can be entered into between the Philippines and Malaysia. Kasi remember, itong si uh, Prime Minister ng Malaysia, ano pa nga Mahathir Muhammad Bayan, nagpunta dito sa Pilipinas, winarningan tayo, na huwag kayong mangutang na mangutang sa China kasi yan ay death trap. Take a look at what happened to Nepal, what happened to Djibouti, and some other countries in the world. Di ba? Na pinautang ng pinautang ng China, nung hindi na sila makabayad, kinukuha ng teritoryo nila. Pambira, pantay nakikinig. Then, the Philippines can also file with the UN a Commission on Limits of the Continental Shelf. Na-extend natin yung ating coast of Luzon facing South China Sea. Which we have done kaya lang sa Pacific Ocean kasi kiniklaim natin yung Benham Rice na yung pala pinuntahan na rin ng mga Chinese. So, di ba? Natutulog tayo, nandun na pala yung mga Chinese. Nag-survey lang naman daw sila. Eh, ba't niyo susurveyin na sa aming teritoryo yan? Ang bihira. Baka naman may nakakaalam na nandun sila at tinating alam. Di ba? And then, the issue about Saba. Oh, ano ba nangyari sa Saba na ito? Alam niyo, ang Pilipinas, pinag-agaw-agaw na ang ating mga teritoryo without us knowing it and without us laying claim on them. Di ba? So, yan ang pinaka-problema natin eh. Okay? Ngayon. Ah, let me read the chat. Ayan. Okay. Okay. Sige. So, oral lang pala. Ha, ha. Okay. I am glad that you are happy with I am saying. Ha? Malipay ka ayaw. Okay. Uh, puntahan natin. No? Saan na yung sinishare ko sa inyo? Ayan. Tuloy pa rin ang sharing natin. Ha? Oh, Saba. Hindi ito yung sa Tagalog kasi Saba ay sagin. Okay. Ginagawang bananak yun. Okay. So ang Saba ay tingnan natin yung nakaraang kasaysayan. Palikan natin. Kailan lang naman ito? 1640. <laughs> Kasi ang mga Kastila, hindi talaga nila nasakop ang Sulu at Maguindanao. Yun naman ang pride ng mga Muslims that they were never conquered by the Spaniards. So para matapos na itong issue ng Spain at ng mga Muslims, Spain signed with a peace treaty. Kasi may mga sultan yan eh, ng Sulu at Maguindanao. So, hindi namin kayo pakikialaman, pero pwede ba huwag nyo rin pakialaman yung mga Christian settlements, ha? lalo dito sa Sambuanga okay? and some other parts of Mindanao na na-Christianize. Okay. So, now, Saba was a gift. In 1704, the Sultan of Sulu became the sovereign ruler of North Borneo via a um, session. Okay? Session, ibinenta o Yan ang ibig sabihin ng session eh. Bibiyenta mo eh. Kung di, itong sultan kasi ng Sulu, tinulungan yung sultan ng Brunei. Kasi may rebellion daw. To suppress the rebellion, nagpadala ng sundalo yung mga taga-Sulu. At uh, nasuppress yung rebellion sa Brunei. Okay? At walang dokumento ito mga kapatid. At mga kapanalig sa panang palataya. Even if you search the archives, wala kayong makita dokumento na nagpapatunay na nagbigay. Kasi noong panahon naman, people trust each other. So we need not write our agreement. Di ba? Kaya lang ngayon, di na po pwede. Kaya may statute of fraud na kayo under Article 1304 ba yan ng Civil Code. Di ba? Noon, people trust each other. Naalala pa niyo yung mga Chinese na nagpupunta sa Pilipinas para makipag-trade sa atin? O pa, paano sila nag-usap? Nag, uh, paano sila nag-transact? Di ba? Trust. Kasi in the olden times, people do not necessarily Deceive one another. So ngayon lang naman yung mga deceitful. Ika nga nila, honesty nowadays is such a lonely word. 
walay nang kwan, walay nang anis, wala nang tapat ngayon. Tanghali na lang ang tapat. Okay? Lahat ngayon paasa. O, wala daw ito, pero wala naman nagko-question kasi nga word of mouth, eh, tradisyon 'yan eh. Okay. So ito na ang problema. 1762. Yung Sultan ng Sulu, ha? Ipinaupahan itong Island of Balambangan sa British India Company. In 1764, 1762, 1764, kasi sa kasaysayan natin ang tawag ng The Rape of Manila. Kasi yung mga Britons, pumunta sa Manila, nilusog tayo at uh, sinakop ng mga Britons for a while. Uh, two years din yan. No? Then, itong si, kaya dyan sumikat si Simon de Anda kasi tinulungan niya yung mga mga Spaniards para ma-liberate ang Manila from the British occupation. So, 1805, in a in iniwanan nila yung Balambangan Island at uh, nawala yung agreement nila. Then 1814, tinuloy ng mga Britons ang pahikipag-ugnayan sa Sultanate of Sulu through a representative called uh, Sir Stamford Raffles. At kung maalala niyo si Stamford Raffles, siya rin ang uh, founder, siya yung discoverer of Singapore. Uh, sa kanya ipinangalan yung isang malaking street sa Singapore, di ba? Okay. So they failed on their mission to once again befriend the Sultan of Sulu. Now, tinagpadala naman ng iba. So ito na si Alfred Den. Okay? Sabi niya doon sa Sultan ng Sulu, pwede ba upahang ko na lang yung North Borneo? Ha? At nahipagkasundo yung Sultan ng Sulu uh, together with the Sultan of Brunei. O sige, upahan namin. 5,000 ringgit. Malaysian currency. So it's Today, parang $5,000 daw. <clears throat> okay. So, hindi ganun kalaki. Maringgit nga eh. No? So, ringgit lang. Yan ang Malaysian currency. So, ito, inaprobahan ito ng uh, Queen of England. Eh? At uh, binigyan ng charter yung British North Borneo Company. Tulad din ng British East India Company. Now, the Sultan of uh, Sulu, Muhammad Jamalul Alam, appoints Baron de Overbeck para siya ang makipag-transact dito kay Alfred Dent. And then Baron de Overbeck uh, connected with the House of Dent and Company at Hong Kong. So nag-usap sila. And finally, Overbeck was sent to Borneo uh, as a representative of Dent and Company to negotiate with the sultans and chiefs of Brunei and Sulu para magkaupahan. Okay? Nagkaroon sila ng kasunduan. In fact, on, Jul uh, on July 4, 1878, sabi nung letter ni Muhammad Jamalul Alam to the Captain General of the Philippines sa Sandakan, eh, it was not ceded to the United Kingdom but only list. So pinaupahan lang. Kasi nagtatanong yung uh, Gobernador General ng Pilipinas, yung pinakamataas na Spanish authority dito, o ibinenta nyo na ba yan sa mga Britons? Sabi ng Sultan, eh hindi, pinapaupahan lang namin. It was not session but rather list. Okay? So, 1892, sabi ni Rizal, baka mag-establish tayo dyan sa Saba ng Filipino colony. Diba? Nasa Basilan, ah, Basilan, nasa Dapitan si Rizal. However, hindi natuloy ito. And then, 1894 to 1936, Sultan Jamarul Kiram II ruled Sulu. Ayan. And then, no 1939, nagdemanda itong Sultan ng Sulu. Kasi ayaw na magbayad nung uh, Dent Company na naka nag uh, umuupa ay na silang bayaran so nagfile siya ng kaso and the high court of north borneo issued a ruling na dapat magbayad kayo kasi legal yung kontrata kaya lang ang tawag niya ay session and remember the implication pag sila mong session ibinenta pero mind you siguro alam niyo ito na hanggang ngayon nagbabayad ng 5300 ringgit ang Malaysian government through the Malaysian Embassy in the Philippines doon sa mga heirs ni Jamalul Kiram sa Sulu. So is that not a recognition of their lease of Sabah? Diba? So hindi na yung British government at company nagbabayad kundi ito ng uh, Malaysian government hanggang ngayon. Kaya alala ninyo, 2012, sabi nung Uh, mga heirs ng Jamalul Kiram, abay, kulang na yung binabayad ninyo. Buong island halos, 5,300 ringgit. E magkano bang isang ringgit? One ringgit is around 13 or 12 pesos. Oh. So, 1961, pinalaya ng Great Britain ang 
Malaysia. At isinama ang North Borneo. Eh sabi ni President Yusdado Makapagal, ay hindi niyo dapat isama ang North Borneo kasi pag-aari yan ng Sultan of Sulu. Ayun. So, ano nangyari? Ang ginawa ng United Nations kasi nag-file ng, ng complaint itong si Yusdado Makapagal representing uh, the Sultanate of Sulu ba? kasi part ng Pilipinas ang Sulu. So, sabi ng UN, o oh, sige para matingnan natin yan, nagpadala ng mission sa Sabah and Sarawak. Tinanong yung mga tao, o oh, magtatayo kami ng bagong bansa, tatawagin natin Federation of Malaysia, isasali ba kayo? Or kayo ba ipart ng Pilipinas? Eh hindi, ang gusto daw nila sumali sa Malaysia eh. Okay? So, yun. That's why, nung uh, September 16, 1963, the Federation of Malaysia came into being, kasama ang North Borneo as one of the component state. So the Philippines refused to recognize Malaysia. At ganun din ang Indonesia kasi may mga islands din yata ang Indonesia na napasama. Pero maswerte ang Indonesia na recover yung ibang islands. Tayo hindi. Yun. So, yung panahon ni Marcos, ang nangyari, nagtaroon ng Oplan Javida. No? Para nag-train ng mga Muslim youth. At ang purpose nito, pag na-train sila ng sundalo sa Corridor 39, kaya yan yung inilagay dyan sa porsyon na yan ng corridor, ha? i-invade nila ang uh, Saba secretly. Eh ang problema, nag-privileged speech itong si Ninoy Aquino, junior, yung tatay ni Pinoy. At in-expose niya yung Oplan Javida. Kasi uh, pa niyan, eh, plano ni Marcos yan. Eh. So ito yung lumabas doon sa Philippine Free Press. Ha? Oh, yan. At, kasi biglang namatay itong mga more than 100 Muslim youth na ito na ang sabi ang suicide daw. Kaya ang tanong ng Philippine Free Press, did they really commit suicide? Or a case of massacre? Okay? At kung pupunta kayo dyan sa corridor, ito yung mga pangalan ng mga tao na kasama doon sa Javida group na yan. Okay? Na pinagpapatay daw or nagpakamatay, you do not know. So, ngayon, Panahon ni Pinoy, siya naglagay niyan ng Mindanao Garden of Peace, commemorating the Muslim youths who perished in the so-called Jabida, uh, Oplan Jabida. So kaya noong 2012, gustong i-enforce ng uh, Sultanate ng Sulu, yung kanyang will doon ay eh, nilusob ang saba. Pero alam niyo naman kung ano nangyari kasi organized government ang Malaysia, part niya as a state ang saba, Paano mo lalabanin yan, di ba? Okay. So that's it. Yan ang malungkot na pangyayari sa ating mga teritoryo. Eh? So we are on the next element of the state. That is the government. So it's the agency or instrumentality that carries out the will of the state. Kung walang gobyerno, hindi natin mararamdaman ang state. Kung walang government official, we will never feel the government. Di ba? Okay. Now, what are the forms of government? Traditionally, there are only three forms of government according to the number of rulers. Number one, the, or, the traditional one, the, the oldest form of government is monarchy. Okay? So, why monarchy? Because from the Latin word mono, meaning alone, nag-iisa lang, a single, hirap yan. Huh? It is one of which the supreme power or authority is in the hands of a single person. So, maaaring siya ay emperor, katulad nitong si emperor uh, Akihito, yung anak ni Hirohito. Pero nag-abdicate na siya, di ba? Yung anak niya na ang papalit sa kanya, si Naruhito. Pagka nawala si Naruhito, ang susunod naman yung kanyang anak, kasi hereditary yan eh. Ay anak yata siya na ang pangalan, di ba? Yung mistaken ay Pukihito. Ha? <laughs> yung ng emperor ng Japan, si Pukihito. <laughs> At itong si Shinzo Abe ay nag-resign, di ba? Bakit? Eh, di niya naro kayang pamunuan ng gobyerno. Diba? Sana all. <laughs> Pag di mo na kaya, mag-resign ka na. <laughs> Wala akong pinapatamaan. Na. Now, there are two kinds of monarchy. Absolute, in which the power of the monarch is from the so-called divine right theory. That is appointed by God that only God can remove him from power. Okay? But that was in the olden times. Right now, We only have limited monarchy in which the powers of the monarchs are limited by their constitution. So, ceremonial head of the state na lang sila. So, lahat ng mga monarchies ngayon, if not all, a majority if not all, ay 
limited monarchies or constitutional monarchy. And then you have aristocracy. Ito, a government uh, held, the powers are held by the few. Sino sila? Maaaring sila yung pinakamainfluensya, pinakamayaman, pinakasikat. Pero pagkayamanan ang basihan, we call it oligarchy. Yan sabi ni Presidente, down with the oligarchs. Ito yung mga mayayaman, nagpapatakbo ng gobyerno. In some other books, it is called a plutocracy. Alam, baka si Pluto ang mangyari dyan. Ano? So, plutocracy. Pero oligarchy ang sinusunod. The basis is wealth. Diba? So, mayayaman lang. Ayan. And then, we have what we know as democracy. The political powers exercised by the majority of the people. Ha? From the la Greek word, the Greek words demos, meaning masses, and krasia, meaning to rule. So democracy is a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So minsan nagiging DUI yan, ano, pagka-eleksyon. O yan, suta ni Obama. <laughs> Lahat naman yata dyan. Ano? Alala ko, noong 1986, Masama-sama tayo sa mga rally-rally na yan. Ang sinasabi nila, ibagsak ang mga tuta ng ano. Tapos 1986, ano? Ay ngayon, 2020 yan, nagra-rally na naman sila, ibagsak ang mga tuta ng ano. Ako eh, nagtataka. Hindi ba talaga magiging aso ito? Tuta na lang ba yan forever? <laughs> okay. So there are two kinds of democracy. Direct or pure democracy. So in which the people directly participated in the governance. So anong nangyari ito dun sa ancient Greece? When there were policies to be decided, then the people would be called, at least a representative of every family, would be gathered in the agora. Agora is an open space, a market for free ideas. So they would decide. Eh, sabi ni Themistocles, sino yun? Spartan general? It's better to die with honor. Ah, fighting than to be a slave forever. Kasi, pinawarningan sila ng mga Persians na kapag hindi kayo sumurender, we would, we would kill you. So, surrender or fight. Kaya doon nagsimula yung mga Spartan warriors. Diba? So, uh, Athens and Sparta. Okay. And then, the indirect. Ito, hindi naman natin kayang i-represent yung mga sarili natin. Ha? So, we just elect our representatives. May sinasabi ko ng mga sa Tagalog, kinatawan. Sa mga bisaya ba diha? Sa kinawatan ba? Yan. Mga manggagatas, sabi. I mean, mambabata, sabi ng mga batang ganyo. So we cannot uh, participate directly, so we just elect our representatives that would supposedly represent our interest. Now, there are other forms. Ano? Ito yung pep, pep, <laughs> unitary muna. In unitary, you have a single government, a national government that runs all the affairs of the government. Uh, at yung mga local government units may not be autonomous at all. Okay? Now, you have federal. Ito ang gusto ng ating presidente, di ba? At in a federal government, you have a national government, pero yung mga local governments are autonomous from the national government. So in terms of taxation na lang, o unitary, katulad natin, the national government collects taxes. And then din distribute sa local government in the form of IRA or IRA, Internal Revenue Allotment or Allocation. So dyan nag-aaway-aaway. Pero pag federal ka, ha, yung local governments ang mangungulikta ng taxes at magkocontribute sa national government. Okay? So ang problema natin dito, before you can shift to federalism, sila, ito yata dalawang ito ang naging downfall ng federalismo nung no? sila ay mag, mag-video ng pepep. <laughs> Kaya na magbasa, huwag na ako. <laughs> oh, yeah. You cannot shift to federalism unless you amend the Constitution. And as I always say, you cannot amend the Constitution unless you let the Supreme Court interpret how should the voting be done. Is it through uh, joint voting or separate voting? Diba? Article 17, Section 1 and 2 of the Constitution. That the provisions of the Constitution may be amended by or revised by diba? amendment to a revision of this provision shall be what? Three-fourths vote of all the members of Congress. Ang tanong doon, is it joint voting or separate voting to get the three-fourths? Through yung tinatawin lang CONAS. Tama-tama yung title, ano? Constituent Assembly. Oh, diba? And then, you have parliamentary. 
And in the parliamentary system of government, ito, we do not elect our um, executive. We only elect the members of the parliament. And from among themselves, they elect who would be the prime minister and other members of the executive, the cabinet. Diba? So lahat, ini-elect lang natin yung mga members of the parliament. Eh bakit mga owls yan? Kasi ang grupo ng owls ay parliament of owls. Okay? Now, you also have presidential. So in presidential form of government, uh, we directly elect the members of the executive and the members of the legislative. So there is separation of power. Okay?